Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in, just checking in on you. What's going on? How are you? How's things? I just watched my Boston Red Sox finally beat the goddamn Blue Jays. Jesus Christ. That fucking Springer, that kid's killing us. Absolutely killing us. And I got to tell you, you know, they, I, I got to admit, I got to admit, they, they got a good squad. God damn it. It kills me. And, you know, and who's kidding who? Bo Bichette loved the highlights, the highlights in his hair. It's just, you know, it's not enough that he's a shortstop in the MLB. It's not enough that he has long flowing hair. He also has to get him highlighted. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, what the fuck more do you need to do? Um, all jealousy. And then I did enjoy uh, Jordan Romano. The look on his face, he looks like fucking Teen Wolf. He was not fucking around. Um, I think we caught him in between growing a beard because I had to look him up to be like, does he always look like that? I just think it was the intensity of that game. Because you see a photo of the guy, he looks fine. But when he's sitting there with his glove up to his face, you know, and he's doing the full metal jacket, you know, where you kind of put your head down, you look through the bottom of your eyebrows. Um, mildly unsettling for a baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, and how about your Boston Celtics? Woo! Oh, freckles. Oh, Billy bitch knees was like, let's not get too confident after being up two games to none and seeing all those meathead Celtics fans walking. Not saying all Celtics fans are meatheads. I mean the drunks that walk up to the cameras after the game's over going four in four. Guess what? They were right. What a surprise. I'm always, I used to be right. Before I had kids and I got busy, I used to be right about sports a lot. I cannot remember. Oh, wait a minute. I beat the book this year against the spread in football. So I did all right there. Uh, but I did lose to Verzi. Verzi did better than me. Um, but I remember after game two, I was saying that, you know, I don't know. We came out, we had sunglasses on for the fucking the after party there with the press, and I just saw that look on Kevin Durant's face, and he had he had that Marvin Gaye red knitted hat on, and I was just going like, I I just don't think that these guys uh, think are thinking the way those Celtics fans are saying in four. Uh, but it turns out those meathead Celtic fans were right, and old man Billy was wrong once again. Once again, I was wrong, so I'm looking forward to the Celtics because, you know, beyond the fact, obviously, I want to see them win another championship. Um, I'm also looking forward to, you know, when we play the Bucks. I'm assuming they closed out the Bulls. I didn't see this, the, the score, but I'm looking forward to the long-awaited rematch, the grudge match return from that, that, that uh Grayson Allen, two flagrant fouls in the summer league game against one of the nicest guys in the NBA, Grant Williams. I mean, that guy can just cannot get a fucking call. And that guy is just completely, I don't know what, all of a sudden he's hitting every three-pointer he takes. He's playing a great game, and Grayson Allen has cleaned up his game, but we'll see what happens. You know, everybody's going to be talking about uh, uh, the Greek freak, Ante Tecumpo, right? And everybody's going to be talking about Jalen, uh, Jalen Rose, it's fucking uh, Jason Williams, right? And all the Celtics, smart. But I'm going to be watching Grant Williams. <laughs> well, you watch Jalen Brown, as I almost called him Jalen Rose. Uh, fuck you, I got two kids under five. I'm trying. The fact that I didn't know anybody's name is amazing. Um, I'm going to be watching the first time Grant Williams sets a screen on Grayson Allen to see what happens. Does it reignite the fire? You know, it's one of the great NBA rivalries, grudge matches that nobody talks about. You know, you know ESPN, they don't have the nerve to talk about this type of stuff the way I do. <laughs> um, anyway, I am back out here. Uh, back out here in L.A. I'm so psyched to be back out here with my family and all that. I'm literally sitting here and I just reached down. I have a pacifier in my pocket. You know, I'm living the dad life here. I was sitting on for the ninth inning, eighth and ninth inning, 
my daughter was literally sitting on my chest. Not on my, my lap. She was sitting on my chest. She thought it was funny that I couldn't see the game. And she was looking at her, her little iPad, which I don't like. I don't like the iPads and all of that shit. You know, they fucking sit there and they hold them like two feet away from them. So we got a little stand and it's like, all right, you can do this. The kids are always like, I don't want to do that. You know, I want to hold it like right up to my face. And you sit there being like, you're going to need glasses. And they just, they, they, they don't listen. And it's the end of the day and they wear you out. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know if my, my kids look at me as much as I'm a dad as I'm a jungle gym. Because then my son comes in and he's jumping on my shoulder and stuff. Oh, Billy's shoulders. Oh, Billy, old shoulders. All right? My rehab's, you know, my rehab's coming back here. My rehab's coming back? No, my shoulders are coming back. So I'm able to... Uh, I bought this fucking thing on the internet. I got to give these guys a shout out, but I don't know, I don't know what the name is. I'll do it on the Monday morning podcast. I bought this thing where it almost looks like a medieval weapon. That's the only, my only knock against it is the fact that it looks like a medieval weapon. I don't dare bring it to the airport because they're like, what the fuck's that? When you start swinging around and take over the plane? No, no, I was, I was born here. I'm, I'm happy here. <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin here. I just have old shoulders. They'll, they'll just be like, yeah, whatever. I'm from Massachusetts, man. I got a rotator cuff issue. Tell it to the TSA. Fuck face, right? I know they're going to take it away from me. So what it is, is it's just a, it's a handle with a little cord. And then it comes with uh, three different size balls, ladies. Um, and some gentlemen. Um, and it works its way up in weight. And all you do is you hold, you stand, you have your shoulders down, you hold it straight out. You do 30, you're just moving your wrist. But somehow this helps the rotator cuff. And I can tell you, my rotator cuffs feel great. You do 30 clockwise with both hands straight, arms straight out, as if you were beginning to be a Nazi and then thought better of it. You only go like, <laughs> you only go, you only go, uh, Straight, straight up, okay? You don't go, you go Sieg. You don't get to the Heil part. You just do a Sieg. No, the Sieg's to the chest, right? If I got my hate group shit down right. Um, you just don't go up, all right? Whoever has this product is so happy that I don't know the name of it as I'm tying the Nazis into this. And then you go, you rest, and then you do the same position. And then you go, uh, you go 30 clock, uh, counterclockwise. You rest again, Um and then you do it at like a 45 degree angle, same thing, you know, hand at the shoulder, and then you do it all the way out to the side, clockwise, counterclockwise in each position. So it's a total of like 12 reps, three different positions on each side. And uh, I got to tell you, you do it 10 days with each one of the balls there, and each ball gets a little bigger there and a little heavier, and you gradually work your way up. And I got to tell you, it's been helping me out. I've been going to the gym. I'm doing the lat pull downs. Everything's fine. I'm doing the, that one that everybody does the exercise wrong. You know, the one where you lean forward, it's almost like you're rowing a boat and you get those people, they just grab onto it and they're just rocking back and forth like they're going up the Chow's River, right? All they're doing, I don't know what they're working. It's like their lower back. Um, the amount of people that do that exercise wrong, myself included, you're supposed to feel it between your shoulder blades, the bottom of your trapeze, yeah. which I learned because I have 80 shoulders. Because all I did was bench, curl, and fucking tries for upper body and shoulders. We just did like the military press and my shoulders rotated forward. And that's why I have the problem. So I'm trying to get my shoulders to come back. You know what I mean? So I'm not caving in on myself. All right. So the one man thrill ride won't eat a bowl of cereal out of my chest. Um, anyway, and we, I got another thing here that I want to... Uh, Bring to your guys' attention, if you can help out. Do you like helping out fellow Americans? Uh, Steve Simone, great comedian and one of the great, uh, just, just people. He's always helping people out. Well, there's a family that was going through some stuff uh, a year and a half ago and some comics got together and we were able to help them out. You know, and unfortunately, uh, one of their kids is going through something right now. Um, 
is suffering from PLE, which I was looking that up. I don't know what it is. They're trying to raise 15 grand to help this kid out. They got five and a half grand at this point. I'm going to donate some money. Uh, it's a GoFundMe uh, for Monique Esparza is organizing this fundraiser. So I imagine that's the mother of somebody. And the kid's name is Maceo. So uh, I'm going to post the GoFundMe to my Twitter if you can throw a couple of shekels that way, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, you know, help some people out instead of screaming at somebody on the internet tonight. Let's say we do that. If we're in the mood, if not, if you're not in the mood, you want to go on Facebook and argue politics. Um, you know what's fucking hilarious? What I've been doing lately on Instagram is, you know, that's, that's stupid self-help shit. You know what I mean? Like where they're just like, you know, the lion isn't the fastest animal. He's not the strongest animal. And he's not the smartest animal. But when he walks into an area, everybody shuts the fuck up, right? And everybody underneath in the comments is just like, this, amazing. I need to remember this. It's like, first of all, that just sounds like, you know, you're going to live your life like a Suge Knight type of guy. You know what I mean? And fucking put your cigar out on people's foreheads. That doesn't sound like you're going to be like a nice, empathetic person. Anyway, so these stupid self-help things. Um, somehow, when I was in New York, I was talking to uh, Rachel Feinstein, fucking hilarious comedian. And we've been joking around. So I've been sending her those. And we just sort of make fun of them. And, but because I keep, sending them to her, they think that Instagram thinks that I like this shit. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you kick, click on guitars, if you click on fitness models, air quote, fitness models, gym whores, um, this is a good exercise for your abs. Oh yeah, do you have to do it in a thong? <laughs> You're working your abs? Why are you bending over? You know what the worst thing about that is? You look at one of those things. One of them, the next fucking time you hit that magnifying glass, there's going to be like nothing but asses in your face. And then your wife's looking at you like, it's like I clicked on one of them. <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to do here? She's putting it in the camera. Um, so anyway, I've been clicking on those stupid self-help ones. I bet I can find one right now. I hope it won't click off my, uh, my, uh, my recording. It probably will here. No, it still seems like it's on. Let me see if I can find one. Um, oh, find one that I sent. They're so fucking dumb. Half of them, they're not even like self-help. And of course, nothing's loading. Where the hell? Okay, here we go. This is just going to be... All right, let me see here. Usually the other words. Oh, I'm not here to compete. I'm here to change the game. And then they play that that stupid fucking thing that they always play. And then people like send that to other people. I'm not here to compete. I came here to change the game. Oh, did you? <laughs> you know, everybody fucking, I don't know. Why are you posting that? You're not Michael Jordan, all right? You're just a regular fucking idiot like me, all right? Just stop. Stop with the lions. You know what they should do? You know how they do that thing? If you were a famous person or something, they do that face swap thing, whatever that dumb shit is that people do. They should, re they should do a thing like a real, an accurate one. Because I know that they have them, where they're like, if I was an animal, what would I be? And it's always like, you're an eagle, you're a bear. You know what I mean? You're never like some varmint. You know what I mean? You know, you're a fucking possum. <laughs> you sleep all day. You don't do shit. Fucking hanging around, right? And then, and then what? At night, you come out and you try to fucking scavenge. You fucking bum off other people, you know? I know plenty of people like that, especially now that weed is legal. You know what I mean? You got that, you got, uh, you got what is it? Uh, BPE, big, big possum energy. Sorry, kids. Um, I'm trying to use the, I'm trying to be hip here, man. I'm trying to use the younger slogans. Yeah, it's just like, stop fucking telling everybody that they're lions. And not to mention, acting like lions are so goddamn smart. 
All right. Although I did, did see one jump on a giraffe the other day, so it would freak out and run away from its baby. It's weird. Sometimes I root for lions, and then other times I don't. I root for them against hyenas. Hyenas are like the hecklers of fucking the jungle. I know you'd think that they're the comedians because they're laughing, but they're fucking cunts. Um, I don't like them. I don't like baboons. I root for, I root for leopards. This is where my, my loyalty is. Like, uh, first of all, baboons are no joke, all right? I respect them the way I respect the Yankees, okay? But at the end of the day, I don't fucking like them, okay? Um, every once in a while, you know, leopards usually are just like, all right, I understand that you have a mouthful of teeth like I do. Like, baboons have insane fucking canines. And I know some fucking animal douche is going to write in and be like, oh, actually... The, uh, the, the, the fucking bite pressure of a baboon is one and a half times that of a leopard. So, um, yeah, the leopard runs away. Um, every once in a while, like a leopard doesn't leave. You know, and you see the baboon's a bit of a punk, right? Not a bit of a punk, but the baboon is like, you know, I, I respect it, okay? The fucking leopard eats baboons. So it's it's... The baboon's, the baboon's basically the dad, right? He's got to be like, all right, there's an intruder here. The moms are like, okay, go get him, dad. <laughs> he has to fucking go over there and fuck with this leopard, you know. It's already intimidating, I would think, for the baboon because the leopard is way better looking, right? Nobody has a baboon fur coat, right? Nobody does. Leopard, yes, Absolutely. Absolutely, it's fucking beautiful. At least a fake leopard one nowadays. So some cunt doesn't fucking spray paint your coat after you bought it. Um, by the way, here's my question. Do these fucking PETA cunts, do, do they ever do that to a pimp? I don't think I've ever seen a PETA cunt throw paint on a pimp's coat. They usually wait for some fucking, they, they go, they're really big on going after socialites. You know, they're kind of like baboons, right? Well, I guess a baboon fucks with a leopard. I don't know, who's kidding who? I don't really even know what the fuck I'm talking about at this point. But that's what I look at when I'm on, when I'm on Instagram. I look at animals killing each other. I look at old trucks, uh, drummers, and what else? And these self-help fucking things. And I have to stop sending them to Rachel because I am just fucking inundated with these goddamn things. Yes, I did just use that big word, and I pronounced it correctly, I think. I'm sure if I didn't, that's another thing the baboon guy's gonna come at me for, right? Um, it's unundate for your own edification, and there's no S at the end of any way. Okay? Um, so, plowing ahead. I ran into somebody today, and... They were like, hey, man, I, I saw you threw, the, you threw a strike. You know, good for you, blah, blah, blah. And we started th talking about people who threw the ball out, and we both agreed, all right? I'm going to see if you guys can guess. Who non-baseball player had the greatest first pitch ever? As far as I'm concerned, there's only one answer. As far as the level of pressure this person was dealing with, the time with which they did it, and where they did it, and the fucking dude threw gas and threw a fucking strike. Who do you got? Liberals are not going to like this answer. George W. Bush. Right after 9-11. He's coming in there. The country needed a strike. He's in Yankee Stadium. The house that Babe Ruth built. Right? He's at basic, he's basically ground zero of fucking baseball history. What did they have? They had 26 championships at that point. And he came out on the mound. They brought him in. He had a flak jacket on. They had a fucking eagle was going to come in after him. If he bounced that ball, ugh. It would have been brutal. The guy went up there, not only throws a strike, he throws fucking gas. And he must have been like, what, in his 50s? Shit, he was probably a couple years older than me. Um, that's my all-time greatest uh, first pitch ever thrown out. I got to go with George W. Bush. Now, I'm sure somebody, you know, 
I was going to pick somebody else. Uh, but I remember that. And I remember people talking about, man, he fucking threw that thing, didn't he? <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good thing. It was a good thing. Um, all right. Let me do some reads here for the week. Where the fuck am I? All right. We got a couple of reads here. Uh, bowl and branch, everybody. You know, bowl and branch sheets aren't just buttery, breathable, and impossibly comfortable. They get softer with every wash. Uh, you know what? A lot of people don't know that. So do I. Every shower I take, I get a little dumber. Uh, forget thread count. Bowl and branch gives you thread quality. Yeah, cause that's a big thing. Yeah, what's the thread count? That's what everybody asks, and they don't even they don't even know what the fuck it means, myself included, right? But anyway, because it doesn't matter how many threads your sheets have if they aren't the best threads possible. See this? It's quality over quantity. Bowl and Branch uses the highest quality threads on earth for superior softness and a better night's sleep. That's not to say somebody can't go to outer space and come up with a better sheet. But as far as this planet goes, it's not going to get softer than these guys. Sheets made with threads so luxurious. They're beloved by three U.S. presidents. Only one of whom threw a fucking strike. Um, they, <laughs> they feel buttery to the touch and are super breathable. So they're perfect for every season. Over 10,000 stellar reviews. Bowl and Branch signature sheets come in nine versatile colors in all size from twin up to California king. You'll immediately feel the difference of their iconic signature sheets. Uh, they're 100% free from toxins, meaning no pesticides, formaldehyde, or harsh chemicals. No wonder I have nightmares. I got to get some new sheets. Fucking sitting here breathing in chemicals. Bowl and branch sheets fit the deepest of mattresses and are labeled with top and bottom tags. So making your bed is easier than ever. Deepest of mattresses. I was just picturing some fucking tub of shit just <laughs> causing a, creating a valley in the middle of his uh, mattress. That's not what they mean, how thick it is. Like a burger, like a patty. Best of all, you know what's funny? You guys all understood that, and I felt the need to explain it to you because I didn't get it. Best of all, Bowl and Branch gives you a 30-night risk-free trial with free shipping and returns on all orders. Missed the Bowl and Branch April sale? Don't worry about it, buddy. We got you. My listeners get exclusive access to all, to post, wait. My listeners get exclusive access to a post sale, 20% site-wide discount through the end of April with the promo code BURR, B-U-R-R, at bowlandbranch.com, B-O-L-L, -L, for all you bowlers out there, B-O-L-L -L and branch. Uh, dot com. That's Bowl and Branch, B O L L A N D Branch dot com. Promo code BURR, uh, B U R R, for 20% off through the end of April. And next, look who we got here. Oh, it's Simply Safe. You guys, you guys know I love the break in protection that my Simply Safe home security system gives me. Yeah, I love that. And also watching the possums and raccoons on the footage running around my fucking trash barrels at night. I knew those weren't cat paw prints. Uh, actually, a possum doesn't have paws. Shut up! Uh, but it's not always outside forces that you, that you need Simply Safe's protection from. This is Joshua's story, a Simply Safe customer from Indiana. Indiana? Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm guessing meth head or a crazy farmer with a sickle. Okay, let's see what happened. A few months ago, he fell asleep with pizza rolls still in the oven. The fuck kind of story is, I thought this was about breaking. <laughs> okay, let's make sure we get the name right. What is this guy's name? Joshua. Oh, I think weed is legal in Indiana, man. Josh, you know, he swung by the store for some medicinal help to go to sleep, man. So he puts his pizza rolls in the oven, man, and was like, far out. I got a pepperoni and a sausage, man. This all could have been disastrous. Uh, he fell asleep, thousands, or passed out, depending on whatever this lunatic was doing. Thousands of dollars in damage to his kitchen or home, or worse, could have happened. Luckily, Joshua has comprehensive Simply Safe system, equipped with everything to print 
to prevent break-ins and smoke detectors to sniff out fires. He startled awake to the sound of a 95 decibel alarm. Hey, harsh in the mellow, man. From his Simply Safe base station. Seconds later, he got a call from his Simply Safe professional monitor. Are you smoking weed again, son? You got pizza in the oven. Get off your ass and put out the fire. Protecting people. Anyways, the pizza rolls didn't make it, but Joshua did. That's great. That's a great story. That's a feel good story. He believes Simply Safe probably saved his life that night. Uh, you know, I'm going to get an email from this guy talking about how he actually works 60 hours a week and is a member of the National Guard, and that's why he was tired. Uh, protecting people when their guard is down is just one of the reasons more than 4 million people use and love Simply Safe. With a comprehensive Simply Safe system and 24 7 professional monitoring, you're all, you always have someone looking out for you. Plans cost under $1 a day. It's a dollar a day to not die in a fucking pizza fire with no long-term contracts or hidden fees ever. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash burr. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash burr. S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com slash burr, man. Um, all right. You know, when I was a kid, speaking of pizza, they used to have these frozen pizzas before frozen pizzas. They, they had these little ones. They were little bite-sized pizzas. And there was like either nine or 12 to like a sheet, right? And you'd take out a sheet and maybe it was just a box. That's, you just had the one, right? And there were these little circle ones. They were probably, I don't know, I'd say a little more than half the size of a hockey puck in, in like circumference, right? And one whole row was sausage. The other whole row was pepperoni. And the other whole row was cheese, okay? And I come from the latchkey generation. Your parents both were at work. They shared a car. You lived in a duplex. You know what I mean? It's one of those deals. You want to have fun? Christ, you went outside, you climbed a tree. How old do I sound? Um, anyway, so we used to come home. And we used to turn on the oven because that's what you do. <laughs> I just realized that. Your parents aren't home. They gave you a key and now you're turning on the oven. And there was no Simply Safe back then, man. You were on your own. That's what's wrong with these millennials, man. Um, we're all like 40 now, aren't they? Um, isn't it time to blame another generation for shit that older generations created? And millennials, let me give you let me give you a little little forecast here. You're gonna do the same thing. Um, it's what you do, unless you become one of the rare, the rarest thing on the planet, a cool old guy. A cool old guy who lived the life he wanted to live, found the woman he wanted to be with, and therefore is happier happy for young people and encourages them rather than telling them everything they're doing is wrong. I'll tell you what I did was wrong is I ate Chinese food too fast. <laughs> now I have the hiccups. Anyway, so we turned the stove on, as you do. And we'd throw those fuckers in there. And we would sit down and we would just fucking chow those things. And it was either that or they had these things called steakums, which I know I've brought up a zillion times, so I won't bore you with it again. But th those were the big ones. Or you just came home and you ate donuts and back in the day, you didn't buy donuts at a donut place unless it was after church. Other than that, you had donuts that God knows when they were made. Somebody made these fucking things and they put them on a truck and they were driven states across states. All right. And then you fucking, they just stuck them in a goddamn supermarket. And I know they still have donuts in supermarkets. And I got to be honest with you, you know, there's something really cool about having donuts in your house if you just don't give a fuck, right? That's always been like the big thing for me. If you're eating donuts, you don't give a fuck. I know the expression is cake eater, but you know, you gotta be honest, dude. You keep, there's not a lot of places to get cake, but fucking donuts, especially out here in LA, for a city that is so goddamn vain, well, at least Hollywood is. Let's not blame all of LA, by the way, all right? There's plenty of people that like guns, 
four wheelers and fucking, you know, reality show TV stars with long ties. There's plenty of those people out there. They're just not right in Hollywood. But anyway, I used to buy these fucking donuts and they had three rows. They had powdered, they had cinnamon, and they had the fucking plain ones. And the plain ones was for the weakest of the herd. All right? All the siblings came home. All right? And the oldest ate high on the hog, ate the cinnamon and the powdered. And then the fucking, the weak ones would just get the plain ones. And every once in a while, they'd try to sneak a powdered one. And then they'd get beat down. And that was the 70s, everybody. And that is the podcast. Sorry. That was a sad story of children getting beaten over powdered sugar donuts. You know? And I'll tell you right now, I think that's why this country's so fucked up the way it is today. It ain't social media. It's them powdered donuts from the supermarket back in 1975. Um, all right. That is, the, uh, that is the podcast. Oh, by the way, I'm getting my fucking car fixed. I told you my son closed the fucking gate on it. It was hilarious. I was like, how the fuck did I hit that? I never, I never hit the gate in my fucking life. How did I sideswipe that thing? And I looked up and he was just fucking standing in the window. He somehow got the controller. And he's just fucking pressing on the fourth <laughs> <laughs> with all his might. So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, that is the podcast. Congratulations to my Boston Red Sox. Hey, Blue Jay fans, congratulations to you guys. You got a hell of a fucking squad. Jesus Christ. You know, if they're half as good as their hair is, that tilapia guy, whatever the fuck his name is, fucking walking around, looking like he's about ready to drop a hit album. Who has fucking white extensions? Nobody. You know what I like about that guy? He doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck about a cutoff, man. He always throws to the plate. <laughs> All right, that's it. The Bruins, tonight, I think this is their final home season, uh, regular season game. It's got to be. They're playing the Buffalo Sabres. And then it's playoff time. It's playoff time. You got the basketball and the hockey playoff. And in the middle, the connective tissue is you watch a little bit of baseball. This is fucking phenomenal. It's one of the great times of the year. It's just, it's reverse October. We're October, you have the baseball playoffs, you got fucking football, and you got basketball and hockey start. I don't know. I like this time of year. We we got, you got, because you only have baseball playoffs. Everything else is just sort of starting. This time of year, baseball starting. And you got two of the four sports are going in the playoffs. We get it, Bill. All right, whatever. I'm excited. All right, listen to the uh, little bit of music here. A little interlude. And then we're going to play a bonus half hour um, Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. That is it. Have a great weekend, you cunts. Oh, by the way, I didn't talk F1. Dude, Formula One. If you're going to jump in, this is the fucking year to jump in. All right? Max Verstappen and Red Bull. I believe they went one and two. I had the sound down. I was on the road fucking editing this damn movie. And, uh, but I was watching the thing. Um, I don't know what happened with Ferrari on this one, but I think Ferrari, they're still in the lead as the driver. And I also believe is the team Red Bull. Not only did they finally finish a goddamn race, they went one and two. And then, uh, Mercedes other driver, whatever his name is, came in fourth. So they're hanging in there for whatever reason. Uh, Lewis Hamilton was in 14th place. And I would have loved to have the volume on. And Lewis Hamilton is in 14th place. Um, I would have loved to listen to that. But what I'm loving about this is finally there's people that can compete against Mercedes. And the best part is, do you think Mercedes is going to suck all year? Do you think Lewis Hamilton is not fucking sitting there right now being like, guys, I am not going to be driving a car that's going to come in 14th fucking place. He's going to fucking snap on all of those guys in a good way, in a leadership way, and they're going to get his car where it needs to be. And the best thing in Formula One, there's nothing like watching Lewis Hamilton have to play catch up. And all these years, all it was was just hoping he didn't get pole position and didn't win the first turn, and then you got to see a little bit of racing. Now... It's phenomenal. And shout out to whoever that poor woman is on ESPN who has to announce that we're going to commercial, but you won't miss any race. I feel like she's probably getting cursed out by race fans. Um, because if you've been watching it over here, I don't know. This is like 
the second year in a row that they do this shit over here where now that ESPN has it, they have to have their fucking commercials. Um, and that's why you tape it to fast forward through. But don't take it out on her, people. It's not her fault. It's ESPN's. ESPN, the same people who are too afraid to talk about the Grayson Allen, Grant Williams collision that is coming. All right? In the next round. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, April 28th, 2014. What's going on? How are ya? I am uh, recording this at, uh, I'm actually recording it Sunday night. I just finished doing my show here in Albany um, at this beautiful theater that I don't even fucking know the name of. Well, look at that. Would you look at that? And you're probably like, why, Bill, you arrogant ass? Everybody came down to the fucking show. You don't even know the name of the place? Well, the reason for that is is uh, I've been on vacation, and uh, I felt like I was shaking rust off this weekend. I had good shows and everything, but I was more trying to remember the order of things, how I kind of did shit and what connected to what. And uh, whenever I do that, I'm in my head too much, and then I don't, it doesn't flow as well. Um, you know, only I noticed, but I noticed. So uh, either way, I want to thank everybody who came out in Burlington, Vermont, um, people who came out in Portland, Maine, and people who came out here in uh, Albany, New York. It was great to come back to this part of the country. I did a lot of my early stand-up, especially up in Maine. I used to do all the Bob Marley gigs up there. And... Uh, the old comedy connection up there I used to do. And um, I didn't do too much shit in Vermont. You know, Vermont is a, uh, I don't know. That's like, the, it was just a little, I was south of Boston. So, you know, you drove up 93 or Route 3, you fucking went to New Hampshire, and then you shot right into Maine. That was basically at that little corner of it that, that, I, that I went to. And um, so this time when I came back, I'm Burlington, Vermont to Portland. I could have I could have driven the fast way, but I decided to go the scenic route. I'm going to go the scenic route and see what the country looks like. And I fucking went there and it was amazing to look at. But all I, I kept getting stuck behind people in like minivans or trucks. And I'm driving like a psycho. And after a while, there's only so many furniture stores and barns and old places with signs that you can look at before you want to get the fuck out of there. But um we had a great time in Vermont. I didn't realize they had the heroin problem they did. You know? I didn't bring it up during the show because it was so not funny, but Jesus Christ. How the fuck is there heroin? Like that level of a problem in Vermont. Vermont's like one of those states where, you know, you finally knock up your woman. And you're like, you know what? Why don't we give this kid a great childhood? And where, where should we move this kid? Where no one can hurt him. And he can fucking run around with horses and all of that shit, right? And, uh, you, you, you know, Vermont's one of those places. Oh, that's right. They had it in Rolling Stone, the new face of heroin. The explosion of drugs like Oxycontin has given way to her the heroin epidemic, ravaging the least likely corners of America. Jesus Christ. Like, Vermont... What does it say? How do you pronounce B-U-C-O-L-I-C? B-U-C-O-L-I-C. Bukalik? Bukaki, Vermont, which has just woken up to a full-blown crisis. You know, ever since AIDS came out, not a lot of people say full-blown anymore. So I want to give I want to give Rolling Stone a good nod there. You know, I was talking to you about a while ago. I was looking at theaters to do a new special in and inside on old theaters. The only time you use the word ornate. And another example is full-blown. Full-blown is only used with AIDS. I mean, what did they say? I'm trying to think but pre-AIDS. Do I fucking remember what full-blown? We got a full-blown epidemic. I'll tell you, last night I went to the bathroom. After that Mexican food, I took a full-blown shit. I don't know what people used to say. But ever since I can remember, since the mid-'80s, full-blown has always been followed with AIDS. Look how much progress we've made with that disease. Not only can people live longer with HIV virus, you can actually now say full-blown crisis. That's a, major, that's a major movement, you know? Um, anyways, 
I got to read this whole thing. I got to read this whole thing. It was uh, it was terrible to see because it's such a beautiful friggin' place. Oh, Bill, shut up with your stupid travel tips. Yeah, you know what? Go fuck yourself. What do you want from me? I went, I went to three places where you go either skiing or antiquing. All right? There was no snow. So what else was I supposed to do? I went up there with Verzi and I brought some Cubans out that way. I got to lay off this habit. I really got to. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm not done with it. Who's kidding who? But I, I got I to gotta knock it down. All right? I smoked enough cigars this month to, uh, I don't know what, kill a fucking grizzly bear. I like them, but I, I'm, I'm finishing the Cubans I got left, and then I'm going to be done for a while. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Ah, fucking moron. Uh, all right, let's talk NHL playoffs, people. I apologize, too, if the, if the energy isn't what you're used to on this podcast. Uh, like I said, I'm in this hotel room, and you remember what happened to me in Jersey when I was screaming cunt at the top of my lungs. I'm trying to avoid that. Trying to avoid that. Uh, hey, you know something? I was giving myself shit about all my Stanley Cup picks, and all of a sudden, every, all the series is other. They're, they're turning around here. You know? Chicago comes back and beats the Blues, man. That was... That was Amazing and devastating to watch, you know, amazing for Blackhawk fans, but that's all they've seen for the last few years. So uh, I feel less good for them and more bad for St. Louis. Jesus Christ, how many times are they going to break your heart? That team is aptly named the Blues. Jesus Christ. Why don't you want you got to you got to come up with a new name for that fucking team. They just keep doing that to their fans. How many times? And they, and they keep coming back. Great fans. Why? Do they keep blowing series? Um, Minnesota actually tied up the series with uh, the Avalanche before they went back up 3-2. to two, And I felt really good about it until Matt Cook blew out somebody else's knee once again. Or as he calls it, finishing his check. I saw his apology, not his apology, just talking about, he has, he has cleaned up his game. He actually won an award for being the most improved player, but I just don't get sticking your fucking, I don't get it. I don't get how that's finishing your fucking check. I don't, why that, the, the reason that you would do that. I mean, he still could have brought his stick up maybe and hit the guy in his shoulder or something like that. You don't fucking do that. But you know, another thing I don't understand is why the guy who decides to do a knee-to-knee check, how come both their knees don't blow out? Or how come sometimes the other guy who, who's doing the dirty move, like his knee doesn't blow out? I got to tell you, I think Stefan can tell. I think he's, he's, going, uh, he's going really lenient. He only gave him a seven-game suspension, and he only gave Lucic a $5,000 fine for stabbing somebody right between the balls. I don't know. This guy's like a player's coach. Who the fuck knows? Anyways, the Ducks. All right, so Minnesota could still win that series, but that wouldn't make me happy because of what the fuck they did or Matt Cook did. But I called the Chicago series. The Ducks are probably on right now. They're up 3-2. to two. I picked the Ducks in that one. I did pick the Kings over the Sharks. That one's 3-2. to two. Who the fuck knows? They are the Sharks. Sort of the West Coast St. Louis Blues where they just put their, they just torture their fans. They get them all excited. Hey, we might do something. Go fuck yourself. Go watch a baseball game. Sorry about that. Come back in October. You know, there's certain fans. They just like, like San Diego Charger fans. It's just like, what the fuck did they do to deserve what that team does to them? Every goddamn, yeah, Philadelphia Eagle fans. Well, actually, you know what they did. You know what they did. <laughs> You can't feel bad for Philadelphia Eagle fans. You just can't. Not all. Even some of them you can't. The ones who actually go to the game and are human beings. But that, that core fan base of fucking animals. I mean, you're, surp- are you surprised they even know what the score is. They just hose them down every game. That's it, bath. Give them eight baths a year, eight home games, right? Now, Canadians, uh, they wrap theirs up, four games to none. The Penguins are coming back there, three to two. God help you if you don't like hockey. And uh, I picked the Flyers. They actually tied it up two two. Now it's three two Rangers. So who knows? I still might my picks might all come in. And what would that mean, Bill? I don't know. I don't fucking know. So now the Bruins get to play the uh, the Blue Blanque cunts. Though I actually like the Canadians and I like their uniforms, but I, I just can't stand their fans. Ah, Jesus, they're so fucking. 
They're such fucking pussies. I, I, just the way the way they throw up their fucking hands when they think they got robbed on a call. They're so goddamn dramatic. Why don't you just take a little fucking hanky out of your front pocket and fucking wave it at the ref with three of your fingers in the air? You know, I actually went to a game there early this year, and I found they're either like that or they're, they're absolute animals. They, that, that's, that's, those are Canadian fans. They're either the stereotypical French person, minus the B.O., I will give them that, or they, they look like absolute animals. They look like they came in from some northern fucking province. But anyways, I'm just breaking their balls. All right. I think this, obviously, it's a Bruins-Canadian series. Um, I know we've swept each other in the past, but I just think, I don't know, we're, we're even enough. It's just never easy. It's it's going to go. There's I, I don't think that they could beat us in under seven games, and I don't think that we could beat them in in under six and the sixth game would be in Montreal. It's, it's got to go seven, right? It's got to go seven. When we both have competitive teams, it goes sevens. It's going to be a classic, and I'll tell you right now. If you're not into hockey and you want to get into it, why don't you check out the Bruins uh, Canadian series? Um, all right, so, so there's that. Oh, Jesus Christ, why do I try to do a podcast after a fucking show? Huh? I just want to wind down and add to my fucking pasty belly. That's what I want to do. I want to go down to the hotel kiosk and go get some fucking Oreo cookies and then some of those nuclear orange crackers. And you eat the orange crackers first. You get the salt going like, yeah, 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 right? And then you fucking throw the sugar down your throat. And you wake up the next day and your your teeth look like a fucking fruit punch thing. I don't know what. Anyways, I haven't been boozing out here and I'm out of sorts and... um so now, like, I guess I'm going to smoke cigars. Like, can I just fucking try and do something healthy? I watched this whole thing online that creeped me the fuck out about the bacteria in your gut. You know, it was funny as hell. I actually clicked on this thing, and they got me, and I thought it was like the, one of these conspiracy theory uh, videos, but it was actually a, an advertisement thing because for, like, the first 10 minutes, like an asshole, I'm watching this, and this guy's talking about food in this country being the United States, and he's going just like... He's going like, the video, they don't want you to see. And he kept going, they, they this and they that and all this fucking bullshit. And, and he was just talking about how in your gut, you basically you have 80% 80, 80 good bacteria and 20% bad bacteria. And if you keep it at that balance, you won't be lethargic. You'll have energy and you'll basically be a, a healthy person. And, it, you know, for the most part, they think that that's the, the best balance to have to not get uh, cancer and that type of shit. So I'm watching this shit and they're talking about probiotics, foods with uh, probiotics like yogurt and fucking, uh, what's that What's that fucking shit that looks like onions but it isn't sauerkraut? All right, looks like caramelized onions that never turned brown. It looks like me as a caramelized onion, right? <laughs> sauerkraut, right? Olives, pickles, that type of shit has probiotics. That's the good bacteria in your gut and the 20 percent shit um that stuff is actually believe it or not this is really fucked up and, and when you talk about your your mortality the 20 percent 20 percent of the bacteria the, the what they call the bad bacteria is its job is to basically eat you when you die i know I don't know. That's what the video said. I'm not a doctor. Don't take this. You can do the fucking research. So basically, because the food in our country is such fucking poison, I guess, what is happening to a lot of people is that the 20% is getting too high and the 80 is dropping, the good versus the bad. And it reaches a tipping point where the, the, the bad bacteria outweighs the good bacteria. And it starts taking over and it starts fucking eating away at you <laughs> like you're dead. And it can get all the way up into your fucking brain. And you start craving the sugars and the salts. This is not why I'm talking about this stuff. Now, I don't know if this is true because in the end of it, they, of course, had a pill that was going to solve all of this. And God knows I didn't go to medical school. Not like you, you needed me to tell you that shit. You could just tell that by the way I try and read out loud. Right. But anyways. I think the core of what they were saying was true. 
because it sounded good. I'm being totally honest. I didn't look up any of this shit. So I'm like, you know what? Yogurt has probiotics in it. I'll start eating yogurt like a fucking twinkle toes there. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to start. I'm going to. What are you going to do, Bill? I'm going to fucking. I'm going to eat some yogurt, right? So what I wanted, but I want to get the good yogurt. All right. I don't want to get the yogurt that just says all natural or says 100 percent healthy for you. Um, no trans fats and all that shit, because, you know, those 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 big time corporate fucking food makers, they found a way to get around all of that shit. Basically, what they did was they got their own people in the F- FDA or whatever the fuck it is. They they find loopholes where they can, you know, they they draw a picture of a farm with the sun, the sun behind it, 100 percent natural, organic and all that. And it isn't. You know, they're down there beating the chickens, right? Cutting their beaks off, their big fucking breast and they're tipping over and shit. That's that's basically still what you're eating. And they can write 100% organic and all that crap. They, they figure out a way around it. So I'm sitting there trying to find, like I looked up all natural yogurt. I'll do it right now. Just bear with me here. All right? Just the amount of, you can't find it. I, or at least I don't know how to find it. I don't know how to find a reputable reputable uh, website that I can trust um, that will tell me basically where where I where the 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 thing that says 100% organic that actually is organic. So I just looked up organic yogurt, and uh, and this is this is the stonyfield.com. That's the one that comes up. I don't know what their deal is, so I click on these guys, like Wallaby Yogurt, Strauss Family Creamery dot com. Now that's a great name for a corporate fucking farm. Is they'll call it the Strauss Family Creamery. All right? Family was fucking whacked. They am buried underneath the farm. <laughs> but what killed me is I, I go on these these websites and I click on them. And then they have, like, big, like, corporate fucking advertisement in the side. So it's just like, you guys guys are in bed with the devil here. I mean, maybe these guys are real. Maybe I actually finally... This shit looks real now. I don't fucking know. It's like when you go to, like, Edmunds, Blue Book or Edmunds, and you're trying to find the actual price of a car when you go to buy it. And then you look in the side and like Chevrolet is paying for advertising on there. And like, that is like a major red flag. It's like, if you're underlying every car salesman at Chevrolet, letting them know what a fucking Illumina actually costs you. They still make that fucking thing. The Illumina guy, the Illumina, right? Why would they advertise? Does any of this make any sense? Just can you guys tell me where do I go? Where is there a website that can actually tell me where the good food is, where the food is that that's, says it's organic and actually is organic? Oh, Jesus, did I just open up a fucking can of worms with that one? All these fucking people are just going to – the amount of shit that's going to be written to me and the amount of it that's going to have liberal or Obama, I don't know, you know? Like, what the fuck? I I retweeted something the other day about how they're trying to get rid of a lot of the freedom of speech on the Internet. You know, the amount of racists on there, I don't know how bad an idea that would be sometimes, but generally speaking, they're trying to sew it up, right? So it's this really creepy article about how they're going about doing it and pushing it through Congress and all this shit. Uh, So I retweet it because it's interesting, and I figure maybe somebody smart will look at it, and maybe they can do something about it because I'm too fucking stupid. So I retweet it. And then somebody writes back, writes, so you're surprised that Obama lied? That's what they write. And it's just, I swear to God, those kinds of comments, I actually feel like those people who write those are fake. I don't believe that they're actual citizens. I think they work for the government and they do that just to start that stupid Republican Democrat arguing with each other so nothing gets done. You know what I mean? It's just the assumption that, like, it's like I didn't vote for the guy. The guy doesn't control the fucking internet. He doesn't do anything. The guy fucking makes 400 grand a fucking year. Makes 400 grand a year. He's set up to be bribed. That's why I don't vote Democrat or Republican at that level. It's bullshit. It's fucking over, okay? This is just really interesting. This is going to happen. I'm just trying to get it out there. 
And you're going to, rather than having people read this, and if it is true and they want to change it, rather than going down that road, you're going to try to knock it off fucking course with that bullshit. So, uh, I don't know. I got to pat myself on the back because I actually didn't take the bait. Probably because I only have 18 characters to call this guy a cunt or whatever the fuck they give you on, on Twitter. But, um, I don't know. Can you do me a favor? Can somebody, just for the full love of God, start a fucking movement where people stop doing that? Stop fucking, well, it's because the Republicans, uh, forget it. It's over, all right? Your argument's over. Um, anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about either, guys. All right, I'm fucking wiped out here. Uh, let's, let's do a little bit of advertising. Oh, Jesus, look who's back. It's our old friends. Yes, you guessed it. Where the hell is it? There it is. Our old friends, Sherry's Berries. They came back. Our good friends at Sherry's Berries are back. What the hell holiday is coming up? Easter already went away. Oh, you're going to get this for your mother? Um, order giant freshly covered strawberries from Sherry's Berries starting at nineteen ninety nine and over 40% savings. Or the or double the berries for just $10 more. Click on the mic in the upper right-hand corner. You just need my code BURR, B-U-R-R, when you order. Um, after all, she went through hours of labor to push you out of her. Gross. Kept you alive and fed you for years. Go to berries.com and get your mom freshly dipped berries. This is so gross. For nineteen ninety nine, when you enter my code BURR, Make your mom proud with this sweetness. They're doing this on purpose. They're just, this is stupid. Uh, enormous, fresh, juicy, mouth-watering berries, white milk and dark chocolate-covered goodness, topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle or nuts. Order your mom some Sherry's Berries today. Go to berries.com, enter the code BURR, and show your brothers and sisters why you are a mom's favorite child. This deal expires Friday at midnight. Make sure you order now. Do you realize the amount of fucking, what is that, an edible con- con- concept? What the fuck is it? <laughs> What's that thing when you want to fuck your mom? That was just too creepy. Um, anyways, Pro Flowers. Bill, here at Pro Flowers, we get it. You have a show to do. You don't want to th- think up the content for the advertisers. That's our, is this not what I'm not supposed to be reading out loud? We're on your show this week to remind you that your fans... Oh, I guess this is supposed to be them. Okay, I'm sorry. We're on your show this week to remind you and your fans that Mother's Day is next week. You reminded me, too. It's it's fucking April. Uh, You got to admit, the woman who brought us into the world, just please don't bring up her veg, and put up with all of our shenanigans is one heck of a lady and ought to get some special stuff this Mother's Day. We're, talk, we're taking a guess that you gave your mom a few gray hairs along the way. So now's the time. Mother's Day is on May 11th, in case anyone needs a clue. Fill her special day with one dozen assorted colored roses with a free glass vase from proflowers.com just for nineteen ninety nine. If mom has a green thumb, upgrade... <laughs> Sorry. Upgrade. <laughs> I got to stop doing this. <laughs> All right. Dude, you guys really need to you really need to proofread some of this stuff because it can be taken so many different ways. All right? Upgrade to the pink potted rose or yellow potted rose plant for just 9.99 more. Your listeners can get this special Mother's Day deal using your code BURR, B-U-R-R. Order now while supplies last. Besides, the longer you wait, the price will go up. Jesus. Hap- happens every time. Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last a full week or get your money back. The only way to get this amazing Mother's Day deal is to go to proflowers.com, click on the blue microphone in the top right-hand corner, and type in BURR. That's proflowers.com. Click the blue microphone and type in BURR. This deal expires Friday at midnight. Make sure you order them today. All right. That's enough of that. Good Lord. Um, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was the, the copy before that that got me thinking the way I was just thinking. That was weird. All right. Um, let's get back to the podcast. Oh, ho, 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 Jesus. Um, movie, 24 fucking minutes in. All right. What did I talk? Oh, I got to tell you this story. Uh, me and Verzi. Um, 
New Jersey's own Paul Verzi. The pride of, of uh, what do we say? The tri- pride of Red Bank. Nah, he's too dumb to be in Red Bank. We'll say Trenton. Um, <laughs> we were working in uh, Portland, Oregon, and we're staying at this fucking hotel, right? And uh, there was some sort of uh, glee club convention of people like 50 years, you know, 40, 50 years old. Like they called themselves Harmony Incorporated. And they were having like this regional, um, they were having like this, this regional, I don't know what, this, this sing-off thing between these different acapella bands, not bands, they just sing acapella and every year they have a different theme. So that this year was superheroes. So there's all these old ladies and guys walking around with Superman capes and they're harmonizing in the fucking lobby, right? So me and Verzi are standing outside smoking these cigars, right? It's fucking freezing out and shit, but you can't smoke anywhere anymore. So we're standing outside smoking these things. And all of a sudden we see this guy come walking out. He's got like a wife beater on, a beer belly, and these mutton chops and his jet black hair slicked back and a big medallion. I'm thinking he's coming. He's an Elvis impersonator, right? And he comes walking out. Turns out he's like a, he's Wolverine from, uh, from X-Men. He didn't have mutton chops. It went up and around like he had dyed his beard, I guess. I don't know what, whatever. And he's got like fucking, he's got this gardener glove with like three butter knives coming out of it. And he's got this giant cigar. And I'm like, please come out here. I got to talk to this guy. So we come out there and he tells us the whole fucking story. And in the middle of us telling the story, his wife is bringing the car around. And I swear to God, I said something and I made him laugh and he farted and he didn't address it. Okay, he's standing there dressed like Wolverine with these butter knives coming out. And he laughed as he was telling this story. And it wasn't just like a quick one. It went like. (laughs) (laughs) Swear to God, I thought he shit himself. And he didn't address it. And he's sort of like at one point, he just sort of he gave one swat behind his ass, like to make it go away. And I think I thought he did it with his regular hand. Verzi insists that he did it with his butter knife hand either way I, he he didn't address it and I, and I was sitting there going like did he just fart was that Verzi who farted and I fucking looked at Verzi and Verzi's looking at me he just had this look on his face like this dude just farted and I had my hoodie up because it was cold out I buzzed down my head so my head was fucking cold so I, I put my hoodie up I had my hoodie up when I was smoking. When I saw Verzi's face, I just turned around and would not, I couldn't look at either one of them. And I was laughing my ass off. And fortunately, his wife pulled up. <laughs> and I, I basically, I left Verzi by himself. Verzi had to look at this guy and keep the conversation going. After this, he basically, <laughs> he basically sharted right in front of us and never addressed it. And so Verzi tried to say, there's your wife pulling up with the car, but he was laughing. It made no sense. He just said, oh, there's your wife. But you'd never laugh at that, but because he just farted. He's like, oh, there's your wife. <laughs> so it sounded like he was laughing at his wife, like how fucked up she looked, but she didn't. She was beautiful. And he's like, all right, guys, see you later. And he waves with his, his butter knives. And he just fucking got in the car and drove away, looking like wolf, like a fat, retired wolverine. Oh, my God. We fucking laughed our asses off, and we just kept imitating that fart. It's like it fucking came around a corner. Um, anyways, that's gross. What are, we, what are we doing here on this fucking podcast? Let's, um, oh, you know what? I just did one of those city tours here in Albany. Uh, I had my good friend Tom Lewis come down, and he uh, filmed me. I did a tour of this city, and it's one of these, these cities like Buffalo, like Cleveland, like Detroit, where you see the beautiful city. There's just no money here. To get it going, there's like abandoned buildings and that type of shit. You get a couple blocks over, it looks like you're in uh, Baltimore. You know, another great city. It's fucking unbelievable how that happened. So I guess out here though, they're starting to make more money because they're working on something called uh, I don't know, nano something or other. I forget what the fuck it is. It's basically shit that they're gonna maybe start putting in food to make it last even longer, like preservatives. Don't already make it last fucking longer. I don't. I don't fucking know. Either way, 
it'll get pushed through. People will say it's good, and then you'll try it, and then someday you'll fucking, I don't know, one of your feet will fall off. Which is why I'm just trying to find some fucking yogurt. Can I just find some yogurt that, can I get some probiotics in me? I watched the advertisement. They got me. They hooked me. All right? But I'm not buying their pill. Fuck them. All right? I want to buy just some yogurt. Can I just get some, can somebody, for the love of fucking God, can somebody help me find where the fucking food is that doesn't kill you? Can somebody do that as I sit here smoking cigars? What a fucking hypocrite. Um, all right, let's let's read some uh, some letters for this week. Um, here we go. Podcasts, podcast helps me fall asleep. Um, dear Bill, I've been a fan of yours for years. When you played Cleveland about six years back, I met you and you were so personable. Are you sure this was me? Um, anyways, I had sleeping issues for years. I discovered your Monday morning podcast and your old podcast uh, uninformed with joe de rosa i listen to them every night and laugh while your boston accent and yelling helps me fall asleep <laughs> that's hilarious and takes my mind off my day i just wanted to say thank you and keep it up oh that was from a lady that might have been like passive aggressive what she's saying like you're so fucking boring i fall asleep well uh you know Either that or you grew up in a household like mine where everyone was fucking screaming at each other. I don't know. Oh, I forgot. I went to the uh, I went to the Red Sox. Take me out to the ball game. I went to that Red Sox game the day after the uh, the day after the Pine Tar incident, which was so fucking stupid. I mean, you know what's funny is they all know that they do it. And I guess it's just to get a better grip on the baseball. So, I mean, it's cheating because they don't allow it, but it's not really cheating. It's actually smart. I mean, you're throwing an object like close to 100 miles an hour. You could kill somebody. If you're having problems gripping it because it's so fucking cold. Uh, I mean, everybody in baseball is saying pine tar does not. It doesn't change the action on the ball. So uh, I guess that's why they have the rosin bag, which is just powder and powder doesn't work in cold weather. So everybody puts a little glob of it somewhere. I don't fucking know. Um, and I got to be honest with you. I finally just watched the video and everybody's like, oh, my God, dude, it was so obvious. No, it wasn't. It was obvious after they said it. And then everybody's like, dude, we could fucking see it from right field. No, you couldn't. What, after it happened? Um, didn't, didn't we all cheer when Mark McGuire was hitting the home runs? We all thought it was great. We thought he was doing some extra curls. Then all of a sudden he gets busted or admits to it, and then everybody knew. Go fuck yourself. I was caught up in it. I went down there with Christmas in my eyes. I thought him and Sam, I thought if he did, I thought no way Sammy Sosa did. And then once I found more, both of them broke my heart, then I thought everybody did. Um, so anyways, we went to the, uh, we went to the uh, Red Sox game. Um, I went down there with my mom, took my mom to the game, and had a great time. We got pounded. It was fucking hilarious. It was like, uh, I think it was seven to nothing after three innings. We'd already committed two or three errors, committed five for the game. By the end of the game, like some utility outfielder came in and pitched for us. And, uh, yeah, it was a shit show. It was like a four hour, four hour fucking game and four hour and five minute or something like that. And, uh, it was freezing cold, but, um, I didn't leave, you know, and I learned that from my mom and I was there with my mom. So we stayed to the end and um, it was unreal. We ended up walking out and uh, the Bruins game was still going because it was uh, it was an overtime. That's right. Critical game, too. We didn't want to let Detroit back into the series, you know, and tie it up two to two. This was to go up three to one. And we were walking back to the car and we walked by a bar. And the Bruins game was on in there. And I said to my mom, hey, you just want to dip in there and watch a little bit of the Bruins? And she's like, sure. So we walked in there. We were literally in there for like 90 seconds. That's all I saw of the game, the final 90 seconds. And uh, Dougie Hamilton came down, took the shot. Gilna tipped it in, and everybody went fucking nuts. And I got to tell you, I really missed living back here. Just how uh, sports crazy it is, and it's the teams that I love. Like, you're literally, you're at the Red Sox game, and out there, they, they you know, they got the the old time scoreboard and they still put the Bruins up there. 
you know, instead of first inning, it's first period, second period, third period, and then you got to the, uh, the overtime, and they left it there for a minute, and they're like, well, we don't have OT, and somebody finally was like, well, just put the four up there. They'll get it. And um, that was a fucking great time. I ate like an animal back here. All the fucking places I used to eat at when I was in my late teens, early 20s, where I could eat that shit and still wake up with a flat stomach as opposed to now. Looking like a fucking tub of shit, you know? And, uh, oh, fuck. I'm driving back from Albany and I'm going to hit another spot before I go to the airport tomorrow. I'm just loading up on it. And then I'm lying to myself that I'm going to eat this fucking yogurt, this probiotic shit. And I'm going to beat down the, the bad guys. I'd love to know where I'm at right now with those fucking things. I'll tell you right now, if booze... If booze kills the bad bacteria in your gut, um, I will never decompose. How about that, huh? Um, Anyways, well, listen, I'm glad uh, my podcast helps you uh, fall asleep, I guess. (laughs) Don't tell the advertisers that. Um, Yeah, me and DeRosa, we got to get that uninformed thing going again. He's, uh, He's a big fancy guy right now. He's been writing on the wonderful Pete Holmes show. And I think they're wrapping their series, um, their season, I should say, this week. So maybe me and Joe will, uh, maybe we'll sit down and maybe we'll crank an uninformed out. Who knows? I don't want to keep raising up your hopes because I keep saying that, you know, like that fucking team that makes the playoffs every year and then blows it in the first round. I don't want to be that. I kind of have been that way, though, with the uninformed shit, though. So I apologize. Anyways. Um, all right. Here's another one. Bill, can I make it? You guys remember that early 80s sitcom that didn't last for too long? Making it. Making it. Too, we blah, blah, blah. We something, something. We did the bit and we blah, blah, blah. We're making it. This time in life, I'm taking it. This is a failed sitcom, people. No more. No more faking it. I watched every episode. You ever do that? You ever watch like every episode of a failed sitcom and when it fails, you kind of feel like you failed? Like I'm the only idiot that was watching this shit. I watched Hello Larry every episode of that and I loved it. They fucking took that off. I watched every episode of Making It. My Two Dads. That's actually an interesting one. Jody Loves Chachi. I watched every episode of that and they just fucking, they, they just made me feel dumb. Then I, I lost all my TV watching self esteem, and I just waited till to find out what the hits were. Then I would just bandwagon on like Cheers, Moonlighting, and that type of shit back in the day. How awful was Bruce Willis's haircut in fucking Moonlighting? He was doing all he could fucking do. So he was starting to lose it. He had like the Fonzie ducktail, ducktail, the DA in the back, and then on top, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. He was poofing it up. Um. You look like a balding vampire. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, uh, Bill, can I make it? It was like a fucking disco ball and shit in the beginning of it. Can somebody find that? I've actually tried to find it on YouTube. I want to say I found it one time, but I've I've looked it up on IMDb. I can't find it. I know that the theme song was making it. I think it was. And I want to say the star of the show actually sang the song. So he would have got fucking paid. That That's a, a showbiz thing you might not know. Showbiz there. You might not know that if you write the song, like the theme song to the show, like you get paid every time they fucking play it. How awesome is that? That's why Merv Griffin, you know, not only did he write those games, sh- uh, you know, create all those game shows like Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. He actually wrote like, you know, when you're thinking of shit, that song, do, 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 that fucking thing. He wrote that. So every time they played it, he got paid again. Do you think you, do you, think you have enough musical ability to come up with something like that? Do, 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 do. How far into it could you get? Were you actually good enough to come up with do, 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 right? Do, that's, that's, the, that's, that's what makes everybody, that's the hook. Do, 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 do. And then you go, oh, I remember that part from the beginning. And then you're fucking in there. It's genius. 
What a giant head that guy had. No wonder he was so smart. You know? He must have had a huge fucking brain. I bet the bad bacteria is still munching away on that one, huh? Jesus, that's awful. Um, can I make it? <laughs> Hi there, Bill. My name is Ben, and I'm from Israel. No, you're not. There's nobody named Ben from Israel. Ben's will visit Israel. I thought that was like an American name, like Ben Franklin. You know, sometimes I notice how dumb I am. That was one of those moments. Sorry, Ben from Israel. All right. I'm 33 years old, a father, and have recently decided my dream is to work in comedy. I've written a lot of funny bits, but sadly, the stand-up scene isn't very developed here. I'm also not a funny guy, he put in quotes. So I feel it might not be for me to, uh, might not be, uh, I'm going to try to correct this. It's not, might not be basically my path to perform, even though I write some funny shit. How do you recommend I approach this? Uh, practice the only open mic in Israel filled with weirdos and only once a week. Uh, get a funny actor friend to do my material. Find amateur nights. I don't want to waste any more time. I want to make some sort of career from comedy. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, unfortunately, sir, you can't rush these kinds of things. I would do all of that. Um, but you, the the advantage that you have, because I know you want to do this quickly, because you feel like you're 33 years old and you gotta you got a kid, you gotta you gotta make make something happen here. Um, you're 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 actually advanced in that you you understand your strengths and your weaknesses and you're trying to see if you can work on your weaknesses to maybe perform or go to your strength and have somebody else perform it for you i would try um look the open mic is only once a week so what the fuck what does that take that's one night out of the week all right the rest of the time you can try other stuff you can try um making youtube videos you can try writing scripts. You can try all of that shit. And the great thing about show business is uh, you just start doing it and then you're in the business. And if you don't stop, eventually you will start making money if you write something that people that appeals to people. But you're never going to know unless you do it. Um, my biggest advice I would give you is quit thinking about the fact that you're 33 years old and focus more on the fact that it's a dream that you want to that, you know, that you want to achieve. And um, you got to go after that stuff in life or else you're going to have regret, um, which you don't want, you know. So I would just I would focus on that. Don't quit your day job, as they say. Just keep doing that. So everything's good. And then as you start making more money in comedy, eventually you transition over. That's all there is to it. So all I got to really say is congratulations, Ben. Welcome to the world of comedy. Have a good fucking time. And don't be too hard on yourself, all right? Stay away from the cunts, the negative people, and, uh, you know, I don't know. There's no comedy scene over there, so you can create one. How about that? There you go. Jesus Christ, there's got to be plenty of shit to talk about there. With all that stuff going on, huh? You know what you should do? Why don't you start a fucking an Israeli-Palestinian comedy night? You know, where you guys all hang out and get along. Then they can do a local piece going, you know, maybe politically, these two sides don't get along. But when it comes to laughing, they all speak the same language. My name is Susie Sunquist. Here's my cleavage, and I'm standing in front of the first comedy club in Israel. Let's go over and talk to Ben. Ben, how did you come up with doing comedy with your mortal enemy? Yeah, the whole fucking thing's right there. It's wide open. It's wide open. It's like when Vegas first starts. They're waiting for you to open the casino, Ben. All right? There you go. All right. What do we got here? Girlfriend's withdrawal. She's withdrawing. Dear Bill Nye, the illiterate guy. <laughs> you know what's funny? That's a funny joke, and I blew it because I can't read out loud because I'm kind of illiterate. Dear Bill Nye, the illiterate guy. Uh, big fan of your podcast. Looking forward to others. I'll get right to it. My girlfriend and I have a very active sex life. We've been trying to stay, we've been trying to stay. Sorry, I'm still thinking of why that green thumb made me laugh, and I'm not going to fucking tell you why. 
Um, big fan of your specials. Looking forward to others. I'll get right to it. My girlfriend and I have, have a very active sex life, and we've been trying to stay safe during, and she recently suggested, during what? And she recently suggested that we withhold from sex until she obtains birth control. Well, Jesus Christ, yes. My issue is that the apartment is a month and a half away. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Fucking rub one out. Said my BS meter is going crazy on this. All of a sudden we can't use a condom anymore. Do you think this is cause for more concern or am I just being paranoid? Thanks in advance and go fuck yourself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's interesting. I didn't even look at it that way. Let me reread this. Uh, My girlfriend and I have a very active sex life. We've been trying to stay safe during this time. She recently suggested that we withhold from sex until she obtains birth control. All right. And it's a month and a half away. My BS meat is going crazy. All of a sudden, we can't even use a condom anymore. No, I don't think that's cause for concern. What do you think? What do you think she's doing? That's not cause for concern. That's, uh, you know, you were getting the cookie and now she took the cookies away and you're kind of upset about it. Um, I don't know. You're a young guy, so you want to fuck every day. And I imagine a month and a half seems like a million miles away. I'm an older guy, so I'm like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Jerk off like twice. I can do six weeks easy. (laughs) Um, No, I wouldn't. She might have maybe one of her friends had an issue and it scared the shit out of her. And I don't know what, but um, what I would do is I would sit down. And talk to her about it without being accusatory. And I would just say, listen, I just want to talk to you about uh, the whole birth control thing if we could. And there's nothing women enjoy better than the guy actually saying, I would like to sit down and discuss something in a relationship. They love doing that. At least the ones that, you know, unless they're wired like a guy. And if they are, they're like, oh, my God, shut up. Um, And just say, listen, you know, we've. Ben, obviously we've had a great sex life. Yeah, and you know, I love you. <laughs> you got to do that bullshit. That's like the beginning of a speech. Like, Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's an honor to be up here. That's what you're doing. You know, I love you. You're beautiful. You blah, 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 blah. And then you get to the fucking point. And just say, listen, we had a very active sex life. We've been using a condom. Nothing's ever happened. And all of a sudden, I understand you want to be on birth control, which is cool. I'm just making sure if there's no other issue. Um... You know, because, you know, I find you really attractive and six weeks is a long ways away. And uh, I was just wondering why we couldn't continue to use a condom. I'm not pressuring you. I'm just asking. Because I really want to fuck you. No, don't say that last part. That's what I would do. You've got to sit down and talk to your bitch, motherfucker. Um, I'm married. I'm not dead. Dear Bill. Bill the Beguiling. I don't even know what that means. You know what's funny? You guys all the time are writing and saying how good I am at giving out advice. I am the classic person that's good at giving out advice in that I give out great advice and then continue to walk around and being a complete fucking idiot. You know? I got I got like everything that I just said to that fucking guy, I should be saying to myself, why don't I do that? Why don't I sit down and just say, hey. You know, I love you. You know, I think you're gorgeous. I want to thank you for being here, coming here this evening. <laughs> <laughs> and then just be able to calmly. I don't know. I got to get rid of this fucking anger, man. It's it's I got to get rid of this shit. I, you know, I don't have to get rid of it, but I, it can't be the default fucking emotion. Like when I was driving across. Vermont and New Hampshire down to Portland, Maine, going across Route 2. The amount of times I had a, a, a mild heart attack as I'm flipping out about the douchebag driving in front of me, only to finally, you know, when it becomes two lanes, go past them and see it's a cute little old lady. And that's why they're driving slow. You'd think I would learn the lesson like, oh, you know, there's some old people out here, Bill. Why don't you relax? This is syrup country. They do things a little slower up here. You know? I did. I just kept making the same mistake over and fucking over again, driving like a maniac. You know, I made the decision to get off the fucking highway. You know what happens. You know, you're going to end up behind some pickup truck pulling a couple of fucking horses for a good hour. 
And I still got, I'm, I'm an idiot. I, I really have to conquer that. If anybody knows how to fucking, I go through ebbs and flows where I'll, I'll be, my anger issues will be way, way better. And they're still completely unacceptable, as Verzi likes to say. Um, but then, then they start ramping up again, and it's just uh, it's fucking it's embarrassing. All right, anyways, I'm married. I'm not dead. Dear Bill the Beguiling. What the fuck does that mean? Look at that. Like right there. What the fuck does that mean? Why couldn't I have been like, oh, I wonder what that means. Oh, a new world. New word. New world. New word. This is, this is just a wonderful opportunity to learn something here in my own podcast. And, you know, I, I, I learn a lot. I learn just as much from my listeners. Why, why can't I do that? All right, beguile. Charm or enhance, parentheses, someone, sometime in a deceptive way. Okay, so this is sort of a compliment, but not really. Okay, here we go. Now, recently, I've been talking to a friend that I haven't heard from in a while via Facebook. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Uh, We continued to talk and catch up, and I found out he is married and has a two-year-old. While... That's fucking hilarious. That should come out immediately. All right. While away, someone... He asked me to... Wait. While away somewhere... Oh, when he was on the internet, he asked me to send him some sexy pictures. See, right there, the fact that you had to... We went back and forth a number of times before he said he's married and has a two-year-old. That's not a good... That should be immediately. Boom. You're supposed to do that immediately. I'm married. Boom. Done. All right? So this doesn't go in a weird fucking way because we used to fuck. Right? Isn't that what's supposed to happen? Um, He said, I said... I said no and responded, aren't you married? He replied, I'm married. I'm not dead. (laughs) God. He's also been flirting with me a lot. I think it's disrespectful to his wife and to ask me for something like that when I'm sure it would... It would help his marriage by making her feel attractive if he asked her. What? What? This was such an interesting email. Did I read it wrong? I think it is disrespectful to his wife to ask me for something like that when I'm sure it would... I'm just going to say wouldn't. It wouldn't help his marriage by making her feel attractive. I'm sure it would help his... Oh, help his marriage if he asked her to send him some pictures. Uh, Okay, some sexy pictures. She said, I also think the flirting is disrespectful. I'm a lady, by the way. What do you think? Um... Well, yeah, you're obviously right, but I, I am also wondering, why do you continue to talk to this guy? You reached out to him. You didn't know he was married. Okay, he doesn't say he's married. So it starts to, obviously, it started to go down. So, uh, no, 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 no. And then, he's, then you found out he was married and had a two-year-old. All right, so he keeps it going. And then when he's away, he asks you to send him some sexy pictures. And you responded and you said no, and you said, aren't you married? You knew he was married. He said he was married. Why did you keep hanging around? And now he's continuing to flirt with you. Why are you still talking to this guy? What's going on with you? Yeah, why, why, are, you, why are you continuing to talk to this guy? This is a no-brainer. Yeah, he shouldn't be doing this. This is completely uh, not what you're supposed to be doing if you are married. All right? I'm not judging anybody in this fucking thing. I'm just saying that he shouldn't be doing that. And if you are offended by it, you shouldn't continue to talk to the guy. So. Okay. So I guess. Okay. So wait. So he doesn't. You don't send him the pictures, but you continue to talk to him. Then he's been flirting with you. And you think it's disrespectful. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's It's disrespectful because. He already said the sexy pictures thing. So it already brought it into a bad fucking. This guy would bang you if you'd let him, basically. So he already brought it into a bad area. Um, Do I think flirting is disrespectful online? Absolutely. If you're at work. I mean, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ, we're at work. 
I don't know. It depends on the level of it. But, you know, what are you supposed to fucking do? Like, I'm not one of those guys. If I drive down the street, okay, like, I got to tell you, when I was in L.A., I was at a stoplight by myself, and this dude jogging by, I swear to God, he, he looked like like Marvel Comics couldn't draw a more jacked guy. Like, I looked at him, and I went, Jesus Christ. His back was shredded. The guy had no fat on him whatsoever, and he's jogging down the street, no shirt on, no nothing. I mean, this guy must be fucking everything in Hollywood. Even I'm sitting there going, Jesus Christ. Now, if my wife was there, I, 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 what am I going to do? He wins. I'll tell you right now, if I ran down the street with my shirt off, that would be the end of my career. <laughs> so what am I going to do? I'm going to get mad that she's looking at this fucking statue with this goddamn Greek god running down the fucking street. Greek God via Africa. You know, what am I going to, what the fuck? I don't give a shit. I, I really don't give a shit. I don't. I don't know. You don't want to talk to me when it comes to this type of, it, it's one of these, when I look at that stuff, like, I always look at it like it shouldn't be done. It's the Chris Rock bit. You shouldn't do it, but I understand. It's fucking, uh, that, that's why the internet, it's terrible. It's terrible when it comes to that shit because back in the day, you wouldn't be able to get in touch. Tom Green has this fucking unbelievable bit on this. Watch his special. I hope he did his bit on Facebook. He, he does this fucking unbelievable bit on it where it's just, it's just there. It's just fucking there. It's, it's harder than ever not to fuck around, I guess. I don't know. But is he doing something wrong? Yeah. But you, you're, I don't understand why you're... You, I would ask yourself why you're still uh, you're still talking to the person. I mean, you reached out. That's what I'm guessing. You reached out to him because you're single right now is what I'm guessing. This is somebody maybe you had a fling with back in the day or, uh, you know, maybe you always wanted to when you reached out. Maybe that's what you're doing. And then all of a sudden, you know, you find out he's married and has a kid. And then all of a sudden he shows that he would fuck around on his wife. And you're like, wow, this isn't the guy I thought he was. So you're continuing to do more follow-up questions just so you, in your own, your own way you can get this guy out of your head because you're seeing what a dirtbag he is. I got to tell you this. I'm married. I'm not dead is a fucking terrible line. That's the line you say to your guy friend in the bar, you know? And she fucking says, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you know, can you believe she said that? I mean, I'm fucking married. I'm not dead. That's something you say to a gay. Don't say that to a woman. Jesus Christ, that's terrible. That's just blunt force trauma of truth. It's a one-two punch. He shouldn't have done that. All right, whatever. I don't know what to tell you. I would just say stop talking to him. Does that work? Does that work for you? I don't fucking know. All right. So somehow I've limped my way through this podcast. Oh, Jesus Christ. I have more fucking advertising to read. I forgot. Hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, here we go. Um, and then I'll tell you another story. How about that? All right, Hulu Plus, everybody. Uh, you've probably tried Hulu on your computer. Hulu Plus is so much more. With Hulu Plus, you can watch current season uh, episodes of your favorite shows like Modern Family, The Daily Show, and Scandal. Um, and watch every episode of shows like Nashville, Lost, and Doctor Who. Swap with any red slash green color-coded shows listed. Uh, you get ad-free movies and kid shows, too. Now more than ever, there's so much to watch. Take total control with Hulu Plus to stream those shows and thousands more as much as you want, wherever you want. Hulu Plus works on your computer, your smartphone, Roku, whatever that is, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, pretty much any streaming device you already own. You can even watch on your phone or iPad while on the train, at work, at the dentist, or in the bathroom. You can even block off a day to binge. You'll also get access to originals. Um, on, I'm sorry, Hulu originals that you can't get anywhere else. Check out the new show, Deadbeat, a comedy about a pot-smoking guy who talks to ghosts. Ah, Jesus, I got to watch that. That sounds uh, Binge on all 10 episodes starting April 9th for only $7.99 a month. Get your shows anytime, anywhere. That's like a quarter a day, everybody. Right now, sign up at HuluPlus.com slash Bill. Click on the banner on my website and get two weeks full access completely free. 
This is a whole extra week more with this special offer when you sign up at HuluPlus.com slash Bill. So get with it and start streaming TV now with Hulu Plus. Oh, one of our favorites, Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Nothing feels better than that first shave with a fresh blade, right? It's smooth, it's close, and the blade is as sharp as it's ever going to be. God damn it, it feels fantastic. But thanks to the shave company, ridiculous prices. You can't afford to get a fresh blade every week, can you? So you drag that damn blade, that dull-ass blade across your face for two weeks, three weeks, ten weeks. Why do you keep doing that to yourself? Maybe because the only thing more painful than shaving with an old blade is shelling out 30 bucks for a pack of new ones. Well, if you want to enjoy a fresh blade every week, but you don't want to take out a second mortgage on your house, you got to join DollarShaveClub.com for just a couple bucks a month. DollarShave.com ships me the highest quality blades you can get. I'm a four blade, uh, blade guy. And with Dollar Shave Club, it's only six bucks for a four pack. I actually like two blades, but they don't make those anymore. At least I don't have the razor, so I use three. Seriously, only six bucks for the best quality blades you can get. So every week, I can pop in a fresh blade and treat myself to an amazing shave. It's incredible. Um, DollarShaveClub.com gets amazing quality blades in the mail for a couple bucks and treat yourself to a brand new blade every single week. Why wouldn't you do that? Your face is going to love you. Hundreds of thousands of guys have upgraded to shaving with Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club. I am one of them, and I'm loving it. Now it's your turn. Shave time, shave money, dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Jesus Christ, these fucking things get longer every week. Um, Legal Zoom, everybody. Modern technology is great. Smartphones, iPads, and other gadgets make it easy to do so many things. But why is it that our lives seem to get busier at the same time? Well, because you have to charge all of them, right? No. Well, when it comes to getting the legal help you need, LegalZoom provides a great solution that works with your busy schedule. Let's face it, the legal system is complicated. There are better things you can do with your time. Thankfully, LegalZoom is there for you. So if you're thinking about starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a trademark, will or living trust, LegalZoom gets the job done right. You'll get the personal attention you need, and they'll help you take care of all the details. LegalZoom has been helping families and small business owners for 14 years, and they received an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Call or visit LegalZoom today for an extra discount. Enter BURR, B-U-R-R, in the referral box at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com, discount, discount code BURR. <clears throat> LegalZoom provides legal help through independent attorneys and self-help services, but they are not a law firm. Go to LegalZoom.com, enter the discount code BURR. All right. There we go. All right. That was it. That was the podcast. Okay. We're good. Um, Okay. I got a YouTube video of the week. Remember I used to do that shit? The YouTube videos of the week. Um, This is the one I got. You guys got to look at this one. Six-year-old boxer. This kid is fucking incredible. His dad is an amazing trainer, and he has this kid. The guy's hilarious. He's like, he's basically teaching everybody else in the neighborhood how to box. And he's like, well, great. So now what? They're all going to beat the shit out of my kid? I don't think so. So he's been training his kid how to box. And I'm telling you, this kid is throwing man punches at six years of age. He's popping, the, you, know, those, the, you know, the pads that these guys put on. God help a six-year-old that fucks with this kid, they are going to be in trouble. He's slipping punches. He's throwing combination and then jumping back. All that shit that I still suck at. I swear to God, if this kid just wound up and punched me in the face, I, I would be in trouble. If he caught me in the perfect spot, he'd probably knock me up. I gotta, you got to see this. This kid is absolutely adorable. It's funny because like he's into like six-year-old stuff. Like He likes Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's his favorite. And he basically likes him because Mike had a tiger and he wants to get a tiger. Like, how adorable is that? And you're like, oh, my God, this kid's fucking adorable. He's missing one front tooth. Cute little kid. And then he puts on the boxing gloves. You're like, God damn. Jesus Christ. This kid would fuck me up. So you definitely got to check that out. And um, I think that's it. That's going to be the podcast for this week. Hey, if you guys, seriously, I know I was fucking around, but if you guys know any way that I can figure out what is really organic shit and what isn't. Because I even know at those farmer's markets that a lot of that stuff is from corporate farms and they just write a bunch of horse shit on it. So, you know, you might as well just go to the grocery store. I don't understand why, I guess, money. Why they're so hell-bent on fucking 
doing that to the food, but whatever, you know, the older I get, the harder it is for me to stay in shape. So I, I got to try to make sure, plus with all the cigar smoking and that, I got to try to do something. All right. So if you can help me out, I would appreciate it. Um, anyways, I'm going to keep watching the, um, the NHL playoffs. I know it's hard in the NBA. Verzi told me I was full of shit. He said the Memphis Grizzlies and, uh, I almost said Oklahoma Sooners. That's how little I watch basketball. The, uh, Oklahoma uh, Thunder, right? Oklahoma City Thunder? The Tulsa Turbulence? Whatever. I heard that that series is fucking amazing. I actually really like Oklahoma. Uh, I like Kevin Durant. He's my favorite player in the NBA when I, when I actually watch. All right. There. Maybe I'll put on some NBA now. Maybe I'll watch the late game. Who the fuck knows? That's it. That's the podcast for this week. Go fuck yourselves. I apologize that it took me so long to upload this thing. Hopefully... Tomorrow I can find a goddamn Radio Shack or some shit, and I can find the connecting wire here that I need to upload this fucking thing. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. We'll talk to you next week.